All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now, it's been a while, been a while between drinks with these uh, videos, but I'm back and I'm excited and ready to go. Okay, now today, uh, I've been all nostalgic about getting into the outback. There's been a lot of floods out there and a lot of water around, and I've got some great footage that I took earlier on, and what I'm gonna do is use that footage and paint some beautiful outback gorges. So that will be today's subject and I'll play a little bit of that footage in the background so you guys can have a look at what's going on. All right, now I'm gonna be using a big stretch canvas with uh, the white primer this time, and the big palette knives and the oil paint. Can't wait to get into it, let's do it, okay. All right, bang, got the colors there, ready to go. Okay, now I've got, today I've just got a, a little brush and a little bit of gum turpentine and that's just to draw a few lines in, so it's a bit of a drawing really, and then I'll start coloring in. All right, now, like I said, I've got a few images, a few videos that I'll play through the segment while you're watching me paint and a couple of stills and I might even play myself in the background on silent so I can get an idea and a feel just for being out there, okay. Right, so what I'm going to do is just use a bit of that with a bit of blue. Today, what have we got here? We have Viridian Green, Magenta, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Sienna, Elizabeth Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, and Cad Orange and Cad Yellow. So, all ready to go. Okay, now, I reckon I'll just stick, I'm just going to stick a couple of marks in just to get me started as to where I want to be. I think I want that to be about there. About there. In this general area. Oh, I feel lightly feel this. Just got to work out where I want my subject matter to be and feel the energy of the... I can go like so today. Yeah. Okay, so these lines are all very important because they're sort of establishing what's going to be happening. Now, I'm not copying exactly any one photo. I've got a few ideas in mind, but the idea is I'm building a pleasing subject on a two-dimensional surface. I'm giving the illusion of three-dimension on a flat two-dimensional surface. So, sometimes you just move things around so it flows better. Right, that can be about there. I'll come down in here, I reckon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just stand back and see if I've got the flows how I like them. Alright, well those lines are pretty good how I want it, so that's great. Uh, just get rid of some of this white off here. What I'll do is, as you've seen my video, earlier videos previously, if you have, which you probably have, I will start off with the darkest darks this time, and I do that quite often, and then I'll gradually put lighter tones and colours on. But I want to get the darks established now. It's always easier with oil paint to stick to lighter tones over darks. It's harder to put darks over wet light tones, tonal values. So if I'm trying to put like an almost black, over a light tone, it'll slip and slide everywhere. But if I'm putting a light tone over a dark, I can just very lightly lay it over the top of it and it'll happen much easier. You can do it the other way around, and I quite often do as the painting is progressing, but the initial plan is that. Okay, now this turpentine, gum turpentine, we'll move out of the way, that's it now for that. It's just palette knives. All right, so I'm going to use the Lurizer and Crimson 
darkest darks. Might go for a bit of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. That's made a good dark. But it's primarily a warm colour. It's more of a red dominant at the moment. Okay. Ah, this is good. This is good to be laying paint down again. How much fun, eh? It's what it's all about. Those darks can just go on randomly and I can do too many and that is fine and I will do too many and then what I'll do is as time goes on I'll paint over those like I was saying. Now I'll just put a bit more yellow ochre in that. A little bit of crimson and yellow ochre mainly with a little bit of the blue and whatever just to grey it a little bit. Ah oh, this is fun. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I absolutely love painting. Okay, let's just feel that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll go for a bit of magenta now and blue. What have we got here? A little bit of that magenta. I'm putting on quite thin. When you stick the paint on thin on top of a white primer, as opposed to just the raw linen like I've used other times, when you've got the raw linen and you clear prime that, the paint, if it's put on thinly, doesn't glow through. But if you put a white coat underneath and then you stick it on thin, it's like translucent and the white actually glows through and it's a bit more like a watercolour. In your darkest darks, we can give you a real a luminous quality to your work. Well, that's pretty much it for the darkest darks. All right, now I'm going to change tack completely. Go straight for the cad oranges, cad yellow. Just want to see what we've got here. Now I'm going to make a real crazy statement, and I may back it off, but the idea is I'm going to put the accent statement in right now trying to get a startling effect here. So that's cad, cadmium orange and yellow and I don't even think I've put any white in it yet, I haven't, no. So again I'm doing it a bit thin to try and get That quality where the white's coming through and it's in itself lightening the tonal value instead of adding white. If you can get it to lighten the tonal value without white, white tends to frost it a little bit. If you put it super thin and let the white glow through, you can quite often get a very intense effect. Now I'm just going to go straight on in here. what it's all about. Absolutely. And just a little bit just there. Looking good. Right, stand back and have a look, okay? Happy indeed, okay. Now, Biggest differences is we've got that, that, this is a lot of white when it's going to be shadow, so let's put that shadow in now, more of a middle tone. It's going to be a lot of burnt sienna involved there, there will be a bit of white, so I'll stick that in. It's going to be magenta, blue, a bit more cobalt blue, a bit more white, blue, burnt sienna, just mixing up a neutral type. Final value. Let's have a look at what we got. Bit of that can go there. Bit over there. Modern technology. What do you do? Try it. 
trying to convince myself I'm out in the bush and next minute I hear an email come in. And in theory I should be out of range. <laughs> Put that in. A bit more white, blue, magenta, blue, white, just trying to get enough bulk here. A bit more blue to make it slightly cooler, it's a little bit too much magenta. Just colouring the edges nice and neat. drop a twang of white and yellow ochre believe it or not the yellow ochre this is all subdued neutral colors but the yellow ochre is just contrasting against there's a lot of variety of in the color of the rocks themselves that I'm painting here some are warm and some are cool so the yellow ochre is good and white it just breaks it up and gives it some variety to paint quite often I think to myself big knife little marks I'm getting little jabby marks here and there to give the illusion of detail and broken colors but done with a big 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 knife yep keep blocking in here and there That's light tone there, light tone up here, a bit more there maybe. Just breaking up. A little bit of light. Change tack a little bit, go for burnt sienna. Maybe a bit of yellow ochre and alizarin crimson, I'm trying to paint more of an orange tone now, but a subdued one actually. Let's just go for a bit of orange, throw that in. Actually needs a little bit of magenta, believe it or not, because it's in the shadow. It's orange rock, but it's in the shadow, so it's just a little bit more that way. It's beautiful chocolatey colours though. This area, Arkarua, in the northern Flinders Ranges, has incredible chocolate coloured hills. Look at that in, get the edges nice and neat again. So, I'm going to go a bit of cobalt blue and burnt sienna, so it's ever so slightly greyer version here, just mixing it up, variety. The rocks themselves have a lot of variety, so that's what's going on. some of the structural shape in the rocks. There we go. There we go. Right. Little marks here and there. A bit more burnt sienna and orange to brighten her up a bit. Let's go for a bit more variety in the rocks.
magenta and blue and white. There's some real cool colors and tones as it gets near the edge here. Not quite trying not to touch too much just yet in those areas. I don't want to bring smudge the orange and the blue together because of the opposite on the color wheel. Put a little bit of blue in there. Help send it back a bit. Yeah, a bit of a few blue cooler tones here and there, yeah. All right, it's time to stand back and have a look, beauty. Ah. All right, liking that. Liking what's going on there, so I just clean the knife up a bit. Moving around, this area here obviously needs to work now, so we just keep moving around. That's Viridian Green, Burnt Sienna Yellow Ochre. Mixing up some sort of water colour. So I'll use those three colours, Burnt Sienna, Viridian Green and Yellow Ochre, and just find the right combination of blend for it. Maybe just go a little bit more Yellow Ochre. on what I want. Let's put a bit of that in there. Pulling down and pulling some of that in which looks like gives a feeling of the reflection of the rock where it meets. You can just pull a bit of that colour in. Downward marks. Put that on there. Pull down. Now, just vary a little, go a bit more burnt sienna. The other way, kind of burnt sienna. Coming down to about here, I would say. That's it, get that in. a bit more burnt sienna and make it a slightly in the green, slightly darker tonal value. And uh, I will go here. More green. There we go. Right. Putting those reflections in. All right. A little bit more orange sewn into the work. I just want to introduce a little bit more warmth in here. reflection of that cliff. Those two can come together. Oh well and good. I might just keep this going a little bit more. Let's have a look from here. And all there. Pull down. Okay, that's about right. Now, 
time to change tacks again. I'll put a little bit of this paper towel, clean that knife off again, and start with a bit of the blue water in, the, in here rather than up there. I'll get to that in a minute. It's going to be a little key down because it's a reflection of the water, so I'll use a bit of magenta and blue, but I'll drag some of that watercolour in which will grey it off. So it's not the full chromatic intensity of the blues that it was. I still don't want it too dark though. Let's just have a look. A bit more blue, a bit more magenta. I want it to be deep and mysterious. But I may have to lighten a little bit more. Like I said, it's okay to put dark on first and just go a little bit lighter if you need to. Just go a bit blue. Just lighten her up a little, eh? Don't make it too cat away with the dark dingy. Bit more blue, maybe a tiny bit of yellow ochre this time. A little bit of yellow ochre as well. Bit more yellow ochre. And a bit more white to lighten the tonal value. these together get a bit more of a blend a subtle blend in there good 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 well, I've got to stand back and analyze that in a minute in a minute blue Yellow ochre and white. Okay. Stand back and have a look. Okay, progressing well, happy with that. Now, right, let's get into the sky. You can see I've got a lot blocked in now. The sky is obviously uh, something that needs to be worked on. The cobalt blue and white first to get a fairly clean colour. Going through that white. I've got blue and white with a tiniest bit of yellow ochre, not too much. Let me just have a look. It's kind of... I don't want to touch that brown too much yet, or that blue, because that, that blue is the opposite on the colour wheel to the orange, and it's the opposite on the colour wheel to that orange brown, so... Don't want to touch them just yet, they'll smudge together. I'll bring them together later on as things progress. Slightly darker now, so I'll go for cobalt blue and magenta. A little bit more redden as it goes up, so I'm using magenta for that. I could use the alizarin crimson. Just like to go for magenta. Get that coverage nice and neat all the way to the edges. A 
bringing them together a little. Trying to stay out of the view of the camera by standing this way a bit if I can. Alright. Just lightly touching over it now, a little bit. I'll just see if I've got the right colours going. Okay, I'll change tax a bit. I'll just mix up some yellow ochre and burnt sienna and white. Make a fairly light tone here. With that yellow ochre. Plenty of white in the mix. Let me just see. I want to introduce it into the sky. It's going to be more burnt sienna dominant because the sky is sending it to green so I need more of a brown. What I'm trying to do is just mix a little bit of the atmospheric colours that are the uh, sky has kind of got a little bit of atmosphere and also that orange of the bank is glowing up so I want a bit of that radiating into the sky if you know what I'm saying. They're just sticking a little bit of that in and half mixing it in. Like so. Get that kind of glow. I'm just bringing it down now so it's touching the cliff face just that little bit. Let me just have a look at that. Just a little bit of a breeze on the water here. Okay, I'm gonna clean that up. Just start bringing some of these colours and tones together. The warm and cool here. that together with a knife, like so, feeling the water, little marks here and there, little blends, starting to blend a few things together. A little bit of that orange is stuck away in there, isn't it? That's all right, that's good. Guess it will not hurt to have a tiny bit more of that cat orange. There's a highlight colour in the water. Just here to get it to jump around a bit. Just lightly touch because that blue, like I was saying, will really grey it if I smear it too much. So I've literally just got to lay it on the top of the water and hardly touch it, otherwise it goes a weird dark colour. Like so, that's good. Mm, you can see that what's happening there is the undercolour, because I'm doing wet on wet there, the undercolour, unless I lay it absolutely clean. It ends up going a dark colour, but if I lay it on clean like so, get the nice light tone of value. We've got it all, a lot of it blocked in, but we just got to keep moving around and start reeling it in now. We've got the biggest differences done. Now it's time to start going for all those other differences. Knocking up a bit of a green here with all the burnt siennas and yellow ochres and whatever. Just lightly putting a bit of foliage in here. There's a few trees kicking around. There's a bit more yellow ochre. Ready and green in that one. Let's get 
those colours in. Okay, yellow ochre again. Pretty and green and yellow ochre is a nice colour. Dropping a little bit of greenery around. Greenery around. It's not a complete desert, it's a little oasis in the desert. Yellow ochre, viridian green. Pull some of that colour down so you get that reflection from those rocks. Coming down and in. Some of these lighter tones. Just varying the colours of the rocks again, like I said. There's some nice light colours in here. A bit more white, a bit more magenta and blue. Light and that tone will vary off a bit. Neutralise it. Beautiful colour, beautiful. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. bit all right What's happening here go around this side lighten this one off a bit got a little headland out there beautiful a couple of white rocks moving around in here good bit of variety lighten that tone cleaning up some areas now just bringing stuff let's just keep moving around go for some magenta some of those blues try and mix up a little bit of a sort of a purpley blue color Now trying to soften some of these edges, bringing the orange together. Bringing the oranges and the blues, the warm and cool colours, a little bit more together. Jut out there. all the variety of the marks into the bank itself. Getting there, getting there. That's all coming together nicely now. Might just get a bit more of these CAD colours again. Maybe introduce a tiny bit of white now. Just knock a little bit of light kicking across the top here. Oops. I just sit it on very lightly, like I was saying, because it's wet on wet, warm on cool. Just got to sit them on top of each other.
Right, just get some white. And a little bit of white and cad yellow. A slightly lighter tonal value now. I just want to start introducing maybe some of the rock structure into this big mass now. So, it's a beautiful big chunk of rock too, isn't it? Beautiful stuff. Let me just see what I'm doing there, eh? All right, that's good. Just put this knife, oh, that knife can stay there, that's fine. Just get a slightly smaller knife, get a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, maybe a tiny bit of magenta. Good luck. And just with the knife on edge, I'm just going to start drawing in a few branches. Just little marks here and there. Giving the indication that there's a bit of, a bit of tree trunk activity. I just got that knife on edge working like that. All right, we'll keep working around, never finishing quite anything till the next thing's on the go. So a bit of white, a bit of yellow oak with those magentas. Coming back in here, I reckon. Just building up some of this structures around there. Might go a bit bigger there, let's have a look. and white. Real big structure there. Starting to build up that rock work now. Feeling the marks. The cat orange. I just want to sting some extra colour through here. Slipper and slider through here, a little ripper. Okay. Light time. Light time. All right, things are starting to happen. We're introducing the warm and cool, getting them together. Once I've blocked in the big picture, as you know, starting to blend them, but not over blend them because they're warm and cool together, they will turn gray. So I'm just sort of putting them on and then quickly smearing without moving it around too much. Getting there though, getting there. All right, well, it looks like I've pretty much got everything now, I'd say. Uh, as you know, you can always keep on going further, but should you, that's the thing. Like, I've got the big impression. The idea was capturing that beautiful water of the outback in a tranquil gorge, and the keynote of the painting was the late afternoon sun still spearing on this hill and reflecting all through here, dancing around with warm and cool colours. 
with all the foreground gorge if you like all in shadow all in the evening shadow or late afternoon shadow then with the last light so with that i get to play with all these beautiful colors because you've got the keyed down version of the blue sky in here but then when you've got the cliff reflecting that blue against the orange is absolutely a beautiful thing to work with in water it's just so complimentary and dances around and really gives that illusion it's little marks like so smear marks little clean marks mostly with a big knife really gives the illusion of that dancing water a few little twigs here and there to give the feeling that there is actually a bit of foliage and it is quite inviting all right pretty happy with it on the whole so let's get that camera off now come right in and have a real slow look and close look at the way I've applied the paint the technique Chuk 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 Alright, well, I just went out and uh, harvested that corn as you saw, and now, fresh, it's always good to get your mind off whatever you've been doing. Because this was all done in one go, uh, sometimes you miss out on a few things visually because you're not coming and going from the picture you've just done it in one sitting so quite often it is good just to leave it and so when I went and harvested that corn took my mind off the job got my mind on something else now I come back immediately I see a couple of things that I need to do and I will do that now and then I'll be finished and what I'm doing is all through here is shadow all out there is lit up now what I want to do is with that lit up I just want to introduce a little bit of the shadow into that so it gives a little bit of light and shadow in in the actual lit up subject itself and what that'll do is it'll help marry it to the uh, shadow version and also create a bit of structure so I'm just adding a couple of shadows in there and uh, away we go that's so really starting to make a pop giving the illusion of light and shadow Digging that. This might introduce a little bit of dark over light. How I said you start with the darks and then you put lights on top and then occasionally towards the end you might want to come back and retouch up a couple of darks well that's what i'm doing right now just picking out some of the formations in the rock you're right i feel like things are starting to happen now i've broken that up so instead of being a flat block of orange got tonal variances between heading more towards yellow and heading more towards red and then like I said I introduced some of the shadow colors that are all through here just danced them around a little bit in there same time just picking up a couple of details as I go just pulling it in refining that little bit here and there all right that's coming along now I'm just going to get a bit of cobalt blue and white just mix that up to a nice fairly flat mix 
And with the knife on edge, I might just put knife on edge, very delicate, very fine. Put some really fine ripples on the water. Just that feeling of wind just dancing across. Here and there, just pulls up that detail. Little marks once you've got the big impression. Little marks like that just really jump. They're the complementary orange against blue. Opposite side of the colour wheel. Orange is here, blue would be there. Put them next to each other and it dances in your eyes. Super, super fine. All really starting to come together now. Beautiful, okay. Maybe just a touch here and there and that'll do it. Hey, we don't want to go too far, do we? Getting some pure red here and there. Really making it pop. All right, well, I reckon we'll leave it now. I reckon I'm pretty happy. Like I said, I'm glad I went out and harvested that corn and uh, got my mind off the job. Did the whole thing in one session, as you saw. Uh, sometimes, you're so impressed by the fact that you've gone from a white canvas to something, sometimes you can't quite see it how other people are seeing it. So go away, do something else, get your mind off the job, come back and all of a sudden you go, hang on, there's a few things missing. And I, I could see that, I reckon I've put them in. Like I said, a bit more play of variance of tones in here and light and shadow so it can marry itself to this. A little bit more highlights in the water, a bit of finishing on the trunks, just generally finishing. A couple of blue flecks from the uh, wind licking across the water. All that adds detail and refinement and gives the illusion of quite a finished painting, but with quite an abstract technique up close. And in saying that, let's get up close now and have a close look. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.